Hello and welcome, welcome to week one of our Peaceful Weight Loss Program. Again, thanks for joining us. And each week we're going to work through a different aspect of mindset and weight loss. This week we're going to look at the science of uh, the mindset, the way the mind works around stress, how it impacts cortisol and how it impacts the body physically and how that holds on uh, to the weight. So uh, each week we're going to be setting an intention because our intention is a message to our unconscious mind which will help our body at a body level manifest uh, that goal or that intention that we're setting for that week. So we're going to get back to that uh, a little bit later. But first, a little bit of discussion around mindset and thought processes. Now, there are many thought processes which are useful to allowing us to both uh, lose weight, but also in health in general, just getting better health in general. So awareness, being aware of what's happening in your mind and in your body at any one time. So improving awareness, uh, understanding, understanding how stress impacts your body uh, and how you are doing that. So we're going to be talking about the science of that sort of thing. Also direction. So making sure that we've got a correct intention and a correct in direction and a goal that we're working for. If you have a uh, clear goal, uh, a goal with clarity, then that will provide a much greater uh, pull for our unconscious mind towards that than if we have a bit of a fuzzy goal. And then finally, of course, taking action. Action is uh, the last, but you know, obviously, really probably the most important, but it, it needs to be on the foundation of everything of the correct thought processes before, but we're going to inspire you to uh, take action. So let's talk about the uh, stress response and how it affects our body. Now we've all heard of the flight and fight response. And is that right? I'm sure you've heard of it. So it's this response that when we feel stressed, we go into this mode that pumps adrenaline and cortisol and things like that into our body that makes us ready to either flee for our lives or fight for our lives. Now this is uh, hardwired almost into our DNA and it's a response of millions, if not you know billions of years of evolution. Uh, so it's very uh, hard wide in us and it's there for a reason. It protects us. It helps us. It's helped us get to this point in history where we are now. And I'm sure that it's actually helping us today when we get into dangerous situations. There is a problem, however, that this stress response, this fight flight response is very wearing to our body. Now, if it's done in short periods of time, like in the olden, you know, in the prehistoric times when a tiger appeared, of course, then it helps us survive and it's not a problem. But if we're triggering this stress response, this fight flight response all the time, then that is wearing down our body. You know, someone used the analogy, it's like uh, running your car on 10,000 revs or, you know, right up on the red line the whole time as you're driving around. It's uh, okay to do that when, you know, rev your car up when you need some acceleration and going to overtake, but if you run your engine at full speed all around, it's going to wear out a lot quicker. So how does this uh, stress response, you know, actually work on, you know, a chemical level in our body? So one of the main uh, key components of this stress response is a chemical called cortisol. So that's where a lot of the science has been around. I'm sure there are other factors as well, but cortisol has been identified as one of the key components. That is the one that fires us up. But excess cortisol in our body uh, can result in a number of things. First of all, it interferes with our sleep. It also eats away at our muscles. It makes us very anxious and agitated. It can cause depression 
and it can also uh, spark widespread uh, tissue inflammation. So it can inflame our uh, body tissues uh, if it, it is there for a long period of time. It also weakens our immune system. Um, and the one thing about cortisol is it does hang around in our body for a period of time after we uh, generate it. So if you know we are generating stress response every day or every couple of days, that cortisol can hang around in and just keep getting generated more. So, um, and the other thing about excess cortisol in our uh, bloodstream is cortisol makes our body go into a reaction which is like the, uh, you know, a conservative reaction because uh, it thinks that we're going to starve. So cortisol uh, is a chemical that makes our body, because of the stress, hang on to those fat reserves. Now again, for our ancestors, uh, this was a protection for the body because in a stress, if, if one of the reasons uh, in prehistoric times people were stressed is because the environment uh, was giving stresses like lack of food, and so starvation was a real thing. But in this day and age, of course, we are surrounded by food, not only uh, lots of food, but high quality in the sense of fatty and sugar-rich foods, which uh, in, as I said, in hunter-gatherer times did not exist in the environment. So you can see that we've almost got this double whammy kind of uh, environment these days where there are a lot of stresses out there, not in the form of tigers and things like that, but in the form of work-related stresses and angry bosses. And then we're surrounded by food and the cortisol in our system is causing us to eat more, to try to put on weight as quickly as possible and hang on to that fat as well while in case we sort of go into this uh, with because the body thinks we're going into this starvation mode so we sort of tend to do more emotional eating so we eat for the sake of it because of the stress and all of this uh, you know combines to make this day and age one of the worst uh, for uh, us getting overweight and unhealthy in general. And then with uh, more stress, you know, more cortisol is um, created and there's more fat in the system for that cortisol to be stored in. So there's a buildup of cortisol, uh, which, you know, adds to, uh, it's apparently an accelerating age hormone. So it actually accelerates our age it destroys muscle and bone, you know, it blocks the creation of good hormones and leads to anxiety, as I've said, increasing blood pressure uh, and also chronic stress and inflammation. It adds to brain fog, so we can't think as clearly, uh, insomnia, uh, and then obviously uh, obesity and disease and all of those types of things. So this is the kind of catch-22 that we are in. So what's the solution? So the solution, of course, is uh, before we, or in combination of dieting and exercise, because they're good, but we've got to get our mindset in order and reduce those stresses in our daily life. So that's the good news. So we can bring our mindset uh, into play here and we do that, of course, in this course through meditation and mindfulness. So that is the key. Now, there's a scientific uh, term which people are using these days uh, to coin uh, this response. And it's the opposite of the stress response. And it's called the relaxation response. So to get scientific about it without necessarily talking about mindfulness and, and meditation, which is what causes this relaxation response, let's talk about how the relaxation response can reverse all of uh, these negative things that stress and cortisol is bringing on to our system. So when the relaxation response is triggered, we can actually think of it as completely the opposite of the stress response. So our breathing slows, 
uh, we feel relaxed, our thought patterns ease, um, stress is reversed, and as a result, our body goes into a reversal of this fight or flight response. We change from parasympathetic nervous system, uh, sorry, from sympathetic nervous system to a more parasympathetic nervous system response, if you're uh, familiar with the nervous system. Um, the heartbeat re relaxes, the breathing slows, uh, digestion increases. And so this brings about, you know, a much more healing response in the body. Now, one thing we have to do is to start to turn our attention inside because when we're focused on the outside we're bombarded by all of this information and the body loves attention of the mind so i'm going to say that again because that is an important uh, i guess uh, motto that i live by and i really believe in is that the body loves the attention of the mind so when your mind is focused out there, you forget about the body and you're worrying about all the stresses. As soon as you bring the mind inside, just concentrate on one muscle and you'll feel that muscle begin to relax and begin to heal. So I truly believe that by bringing the mind uh, back inside, not only do you, uh, or as well as triggering this relaxation response, you will bring about a healing uh, to the body. It reduces all of those different chemicals, cortisol being the main one, but adrenaline and, and lots of other, you know, endocrinonic, endocrine, whatever that is, uh, chemicals in our, our body, neuropeptides and things like that, um, to bring about uh, the good hormones that allow us to relax. So that makes sense, right? to be able to uh, reverse this stress response. Now, in this course, we're going to get, do it in two ways. Uh, the, the first sort of set of meditations or part of the meditation is really the fundamental uh, meditation in itself. And we're just going to concentrate on breath meditation. So the, the first part of the meditation is really the essence of what meditation is. And we'll be talking about that through bringing our mind to the breath, which is the meditation object that's, that's been around as long as meditation has been around. It's kind of the quintessential meditation object. And it really helps because meditating on the breath really connects you in with the rest of your body. And there's something interesting about the breath in that the breath is mostly unconscious. In other words, we breathe 99% or yeah, 99, probably 99% of the time without thinking about it. But we can bring conscious awareness to the breath. We can deliberately breathe in and breathe out when we want to. So breath is one of the very few parts of our system which is both conscious and unconscious at the same time. So by consciously controlling the breath, breath we actually have an impact more directly on the unconscious mind. But in any case, it's also very uh, soothing. So we're going to do a breath meditation to start. So below this video, you'll see a download of uh, part one or the very uh, beginning uh, of this breath meditation. And I'd like you to, uh, you know, stop the video if you like and practice that breath meditation. We'll go through the breath meditation together and like I said, you can download that uh, MP3 onto your phone so that at a later date or whenever you have 10 minutes or five minutes, you can use that audio to remind yourself of what you need to be doing to meditate just purely on your breath. And then we're going to sort of be adding to it uh, in future lessons. So uh, that's the first thing. So go ahead, try that breath meditation now. Okay, so how did you go with meditation? Your very first meditation of this course and beginning to learn mindfulness. Now, we do have many other mindfulness uh, meditations in other areas of our um, um, platform or different membership areas. Some of them are free. So go ahead and uh, also feel free to check out those for even more detailed 
uh, explanations on mindfulness by itself. But in terms of weight loss, mindfulness is the first step of being truthful with your body and being able to feel your, your body um, and understand the thoughts that are going on in your mind. So we've done mindfulness of breath. Uh, in a moment, we're going to also do a mindfulness of body, which Suzanne's going to take us through. But before we do that, let's have a little break between meditations and I want to discuss another point that I brought up at the beginning, which is in our intention. So our unconscious mind needs a guiding light. And if we can give it a very clear intention, almost a picture of where we want to be, then this will kind of pull our unconscious mind forward and allow it to achieve the goals that we want. Now, people do this uh, for lots of goals, including external goals like being having a successful business or going on a holiday or whatever. But we're going to use it in terms of uh, what we want to see the changes in our body. So as uh, I sort of suggested right at the beginning, uh, think about a uh, goal that you have uh, for this weight loss program. Now, obviously, we would initially say, yes, well, I want to uh, lose X amount of kilos. And that's fine. But uh, the unconscious mind works better if you work uh, you know, with something which you can connect to emotionally. So rather than just a number uh, on the, the, the scales or whatever, think about why you want to lose that weight. So losing weight by itself is, um, you know, just one thing. The, the, the real question is, what will you achieve when you get to a more fitter, healthier you? So think about, do you want to uh, lose weight to, you know, keep up with the grandkids or to be able to feel better or have more energy or maybe you're dealing with a chronic health condition and you want that to get better? Um, or there could be a number of reasons why you want to lose weight. And it's tapping in to these reasons which are probably more important than the numbers on the scales themselves. And so take a moment to uh, think about and maybe even write down what are what is your why for wanting to uh, lose weight and get healthier. And as you do that, think about a picture of what it would look like for you when you achieve this goal. So go ahead and do that. You can pause this video again right now as you get out a uh, pencil and paper and write that down. So go ahead, just pause the video and we'll come back when you've written that down. Okay, so fast forward, hope you have written that down. Now, we also want to put a date on that uh, goal. So I'll say for argument's sake, three months, but it might be a couple of weeks or it might be a year or whatever. But let's say your goal is for, uh, you know, three months time. So in order to try to have that goal resonate with your unconscious mind, let's just do a quick exercise now. If it helps to close your eyes then go ahead and do that and visualize yourself into the future, let's say in three months time, doing the activity with more energy and more health and you know, doing whatever it is that you visualized, see the people around you, see what you're doing, and imagine being there right now and feel the happiness that you would feel. So get those positive emotions going of achieving that goal. Okay. Now, this is a little bit of a funny exercise, but imagine stepping out of a picture as if you could step out of that picture so that it becomes a picture between your two hands. And then imagine physically inserting that into uh, a point in your timeline, which is three months in this case, or whenever you want that to occur. And imagine it clicking in place so that that is now waiting for you out there in your future to pull you towards. So this gives a clear picture to the unconscious mind that that is what, you know, we are 
uh, aiming to do. Okay, so that's just a little uh, exercise. The main thing though is to have a good focus, clear picture of your intention of why you want to lose weight in this program. All right, now that we've uh, set our intention, let's uh, go on to another mindfulness uh, meditation. And this one is mindfulness of the body, which is also another common, uh, probably the second most common meditation after mindfulness of the breath. It's a great one to do not only here while you're you know, listening to this teaching, but if you uh, need help sleeping or if you're in bed before you go to sleep or even if you wake up in the middle of the night, then think about this meditation and you can go through this meditation uh, while you're lying down. You can indeed lie down now if you would like to, to do this meditation. Um, but it will not only uh, relax and bring mindfulness to the body, bring your attention inside and heal the body, uh, but it also may help you relax and then go back to sleep if that's what you need. So, our good colleague uh, Susan Ingleton has uh, created this meditation for you, so just so that it's not all me. Um, have a listen to the meditation below as uh Suzanne takes you through a mindfulness of body so go ahead pause the video again download it to your phone if you like and then uh, listen to that uh, meditation and then we'll come back and we'll uh, finish off here okay so again I hope you pause the video and listen to that meditation so just to conclude, uh, we're, first, we're going to make a commitment. So first of all, decide when you want to watch the next lesson, clicking onto the next lesson, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a week's time. I think a week is a, a good amount of space to allow you to do these meditations every day. Um, <clears throat> and then make a commitment as to what are the goals you want to achieve. So maybe you do have some dieting goals or some physical exercise goals. So make a commitment now uh, to making sure that you keep up those goals. And also perhaps make a commitment to again visualize uh, what you want to see or your goal of how you want to be in three months or six months or a few weeks or whatever it is at, at the end of this program say. All right, so that's it from me. Uh, for this lesson, I hope that this has been a useful uh, uh, to you know a, a useful time for you to do that. And even if you just take one or two learnings out of uh, each lecture, it will have a profound impact on you. But also feel free to come back and listen to this again because sometimes uh, the second time we go through a uh, set of trainings, you get more. Uh, lessons that you can then take with you uh, in your journey. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the uh, meditations and we will see you in lesson two.